One of the great joys of a library, whether it's a private library or public library, is serendipity. So certainly when you come into David's library, you know, you never know what's going to be on the table that David's looking at or on the screen. And there is an aspect of that that we're trying to replicate in the MAP Center. That when students come or people come for a lecture or a scholar comes, that there'll be a rotation of materials available to look at. Other people will be working in the room and somehow you'll get a sense, not just of what you're looking at and what you came to the MAP Center to look at, but of all the other possibilities. The vision that I've held for the center is that it'll be this amazing place where people will come to enjoy the maps as exhibits, to work with the maps as research, to come to a lecture about maps, to have a class about mapping, and particularly I think the contribution that I would like to see the center make to map libraries in general is on the technical side, the whole digital side, to make the digital tools like GIS and large visualization screens really work and sing with the physical maps in ways that furthers all of the different things that we want to do there. The centerpiece of, uh, of the center is a very large screen. It's 10 feet high, 15 feet wide. It can display maps that are in their original size. Imagine what you can do if you can magnify these maps. But uh, to be able to bring that map in, bring in other maps of different time periods, be able to compare all in the same space, while at the same time, turn around and see the physical maps. The Stanford faculty is very sort of geospatially oriented. And that was thrilling to us, the idea that this collection would be used not just by our normal beloved map lovers and cartographic historians, but by Americanists, by linguists, by environmental historians. We see students coming in and faculty coming in understanding that they can use spatial information in a way to look at the world differently and come to some different conclusions about it. One of the things we've worked hard at is taking the physical pieces, making them digital, and then adding born digital information on top of that to allow people to do this kind of analysis and understand things in a different way that they didn't before. Stanford kept coming out on top in our thinking because of its commitment to the digital, which was very important to me and to Abby because this is a collection not just of the physical materials, but currently almost 60,000 high resolution images and metadata and georeferenced images. There's a whole digital instantiation of the collection that Stanford was quite interested in and willing to preserve. When you think about building a collection and its afterlife after you're gone, what matters the most is stewardship. Uh, and so naturally you think about giving it to a library, and not just any library, but a library that has a dedicated preservation staff, understands preservation science, and does not just material preservation, but also digital preservation. Cartography will become the visualization of data of all types. We will be pioneering a lot of techniques. Some of the techniques will work, others may not work. And we will keep trying out new ideas. So this, in a sense, makes the center into a laboratory, which I think can be very exciting to donors to be a part of that story. Looking at maps is a way of visiting the past that you can't in any other way. As I see David interact with maps, I'm sure he did this as a young boy, that you enter into a map and it really is its own world and you can very easily get lost in it. Well, I agree completely and I, I wish in my undergraduate days I had had access to this kind of center, this kind of mapping. The center can be a place where the passion that all of us have who love maps can be made real and can be expressed.